Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to be discussing about gradient descent uh, in Python uh, using Google Colab. Now, gradient descent is important in optimization, in machine learning, and in deep learning. The reason is because a lot of time we have a model and we want to optimize the model. Or another way of saying that is, um, you know, we uh, have a cost function or an error function, and we want to minimize that. And the derivative or the gradient can tell us the direction that the terrain uh, of the model is moving. Is it moving up? Is it moving down? Okay. So if you take a look at the um, um, notebook right here, you see that, uh, as I mentioned, gradient descent is important in um, optimization, deep learning, and machine learning. And we can follow the gradient um, to uh, toward a minimum because we want to minimize uh, the loss or error function right here. And this minimum usually depends on the starting point. So if you have two or three local um, minimum, depending on the starting point, it might go to uh, one of the, um, the local minimum right here. And, it, the, and the intuition behind the gradient is that uh, the gradient give the direction of increasing um, uh, that, that the function increase the most. So if we take small step in the opposite direction, you know, so minus the gradient, then th that might decrease the, the function each time and after each uh, iteration, giving a learning rate and giving the epoch time or the number of time that we go through um, you know the, uh, uh, the the computation process. It might give us a uh, drive us uh, uh, give us the local uh, minimum. So to give an example of the um, to give an example of the um, gradient descent right here, I created a function uh, you can see right here. So I'm I actually import numpy, math.lib, simpy, and the uh, Python display. Uh, SimPy is to do um, uh, algebra uh, in, uh, uh, in Python. Matplotlib is to plot. Uh, NumPy is to generate data. Okay, and then the display right here, just to display the equation uh, in a nicer way. So I define, I'm using, this right here is the, uh, is a way that we define function, uh, function in Python right here with the def and the colon right here. And so this function return this uh, polynomial right here. If you expand it out, this polynomial is the, the, to the sixth power, as you can see right here. Okay, so this right here is the expanded version of this one right here. So if you expand it out and you take the derivative of, the, of this function right here, you would get this right here. So for example, uh, six, uh, x to the sixth right here, right? The, the derivative of that is, uh, 6 times x to the 6 minus 1 is 5 right here. Another example is right here, right? Minus 14 to the third power. That would become uh, uh, 32. So 3 times 14. And x to the... Um, uh, uh, 42 right here, right? x to the second power right here. So this right here is the derivative of this one right here. The second cell right here, or the next cell, plot the, uh, the two, fun uh, the two uh, fun uh, functions, the derivative of the function and the function itself right here. So this guy right here plot the function and this guy right here plot the derivative of the function. And for the x, I'm using the uh, linear space right here. And it's basically, you know, if you look at the parameters in here, it would create 1000 equally spaced points uh, starting from minus 3 to 2.5. So that, that's what linear space in uh, NumPy does, okay? And then for each one of these points right here, I calculate the, fun uh, the function of x or, you know, y in this situation and the derivative of that, and I plot that onto both of them onto this plot right here. I give us a title, plot of the function and its derivative. Uh, here's the x label. Here is the y label right here. I'm turning the grid on, so you can see there's a grid right there. And then the legend it's gonna tell which you know which curve which fun, uh, curve belong to what right here. So f sub x is the blue and f prime sub x of the derivative is the cap orange right here. Okay, and then um, also you can see 
uh, I also set the limit that minus 50 to 50 and minus 3 uh, on the y-axis and the x limit is minus 3 to 2.5 so that it look a bit nicer uh, right here as you can see right here right here is a function uh, it has a local minimum about 2 point minus 2.5 it has another local minimum about 2 right here and then you have a point right here where it's not a minimum or, uh, or maximum but the derivative is zero right here, so about minus one right here. And the orange line is the derivative of the function. You can also, you know, instead of just hard coding this right here, right, you can also use SymPy to uh, express the equation, the polynomial right here. Um, and you can see right here, right, so I create a symbol, uh, x, uh, create a symbol x and then I uh, define a function as same as before and assign it to the variable f of x right here okay and then you can see right here right with this you can use SymPy to expand f of x into a different format uh, this one right here this is the expand version of the same function and then you can use the diff, uh, uh, diff function of SymPy to differentiate you know pass in the the function and then you can display uh, the derivative I again I also use expand to so that I expand this derivative into um, the format that we are uh, familiar to uh, uh, we, we seen uh, uh, similar to what we seen now uh, this one right here right you cannot compute um, uh, directly use, yeah, using this uh, using this uh, this and uh, this variable right here if you want to compute in your know, do computation you have to use the function lambda phi you have to use the function lambda phi right here um and then uh, but i i side that function to you know, for the lambda phi version of of uh of this and then derivative of function as uh as the lambda phi version of this right here and you can see right here right if you print out function 3.1 using the previous definition uh, you know, uh, function defined regularly in Python, and then you use a sim, uh, a lambda five version. Uh, it gives us the same result, right here, far away. Okay. Now for the plotting, for example, I decide you know in this in this plot right here, right, I'm going to use the uh, uh, sim pi version of function, and the def uh, a sim pi version of the derivative of the function, and plot it right here. Notice that I also have to recreate the lint space again right here, right? Because I'm using, it's not a good practice, but I'm using x. You can see right here, right? I'm using x the, again, and at this, in this moment right here, I change it to the type SymPy, uh, belong to SymPy, right? So if I if I didn't do this again right here, and I put, I pass x in here, it's going to give us an error. So I want to, um, you know, uh, read, uh, kind of redundant but define lint space again as I did previously uh, right here, okay? So when you do that and you pass it in, uh, you notice that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the SymPy version of the plot uh, give us the same result as this version right here, okay? Now, when it comes to gradient descent, uh, we're gonna have to define uh, to uh, two new variables, the training epoch and the learning rate. Uh, the training epoch is basically how many iteration uh, we're going to go through the algorithm. And in this situation, I'll, I'm defining it to be, a, uh, I'm sending it to be a thousand. Now the learning rate is um, is to scaling the number of the step that we take in. So if you have a small, uh, uh, small number like this, the step is going to be scaled small. In this situation, I'm sending the learning rate to 0 0.001, and the um, the min time is basically your initial starting point right here. I'm choosing from uh, in this situation right here, I'm taking my the range of x, which is about a thousand right here, um, and then I'm gonna pick one number out of that. I'm I'm gonna assign to min time. Uh, just to review, right? You see that there's a function right here. There's a minimum. Uh, there's another minimum, uh, local minimum. This is actually the uh, a global minimum, 
and then there's a point right here that's not a minimum but you have a stop which is an orange light right here zero and depend on where your starting point your min time is going to be uh, it's going to either pick this point this point or this point right here so uh, when i run the, you know it previously uh it you know it's starting the starting point is 1.7 so it's going to pick the uh, local minimum of uh, two right here okay and the algorithm is essentially um, we we start with the um, temp uh, uh, starting point, and then we'll you know we'll take the derivative we'll, we'll take the derivative of that, and um, multiply by the learning rate, and then whatever the direction it is, we're gonna set it to the opposite direction this minus size right here, and then we update our um, our point. And we iterate again through this um, this for loop right here, uh, from one on the way to a thousand right here, and then um, at the end we start. This is a starting uh, point. This is the ending point, and this right here is the derivative of the uh, ending point right here. So if I run it again, for example, um, it's gonna start at minus point A, and it's gonna pick this point right here. So minus point A. So start right here. So it's gonna pick. Uh, this point somewhere right about here uh, as a low uh, as the um, uh, local you know, that's the thing is the local minimum so let me try that again and again I see right here right if you pick um, minus 1.3 minus 1.3 is over here then it's gonna go to this one right here and then let me do it one more time and then if you if you start at 1 for example, right here, right, and it's gonna to go to this two right here uh, as a as a minimum. So, depend on the starting point, um, you gonna get different result. Um, finally, we can also do this using the SimPy approach right here. The, the, this um, <laughs> this algorithm right here, we use a regular function d5 uh, function, uh, and then um, this one right here, we are using the um, SimPy d5 function to lambda five. And you can see right here, right? This one right here using SimPy. And if I run it, uh, a similar structure, if I run it, um, you see that it's gonna give us more, more or less the same process. So like for example, if you start at 2.4, um, and then 2.4 is right here, it's gonna find this minimum right here. And you see that the derivative of that is essentially zero. 10 to the minus 13 is a really small number, and 10 to the minus 14, is the uh, uh, really small number. So here is the uh, algorithm uh, uh, using the SimPy method, as you can see right here. And then here is the algorithm, the gradient descent approach uh, using the regular function right there. So both of them would work. Um, I hope that uh, 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 it helped you and you learned something about gradient descent. Uh, if you do, uh, please give it a heart, give it a like. Uh, uh, your comment, uh, subscribe, and have a good day.